Welcome to Higher Calling, guys. Uh, hope that you had a great day. Um, it's been an awesome holiday season, at least for my family and I. Spent a lot of time together um, and really enjoyed it. Uh, so I'll let you guys introduce yourselves. I'm Joshua Cox with Higher Calling Church. Jerry was about to take a sip of his hot cocoa, probably. Hello, Higher Calling Church. Great to have everybody today. Um, I'm Jerry Green. And uh, what about me? Um, I'm a teacher. I am newlywed. This is my beautiful wife, Brittany Green. Hello. <laughs> and we had an awesome holiday season, too. Um, very blessed. We got to spend some time with um, some of my family that I haven't got to see in about, gosh, 12, 15 years or so. So it was really awesome. That's awesome. That's awesome. Guys, um, I see we got a few people joining us. Hey, Mr. Albert, how you doing, brother? I uh, got Sanchez on. Hello. Uh, hello. Grace and peace to you, my friend, as well. Um, we've been talking the past week, or we spoke last week, about a few things concerning loneliness and how the enemy, as well as our own memories and thoughts, try to attack us. And we also talked about some practical ways that we could combat that you know, with community, with the word, with prayer, with, you know, seeking the right kind of help, but also trusting that God has a plan for our life in the midst of it all. And we're going to talk about the same subject, but from a different point of view tonight, we're going to stay in the same vein. But before we do, uh, I think prayer is always in order. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to ask one of the greens, if not both the greens, whoever feels, you know, ready and live if they would pray us in i'll go ahead all right guys let's uh, go ahead and pray lord we thank you for this day we worship you we honor you god we thank you for um a new day lord god i thank you that your mercies are were new today yes, lord god. God. new tomorrow lord god and we thank you for that father we thank you um for your grace we thank you jesus for the cross we thank you for your salvation god lord i ask that you would lead our bible study holy spirit Yes, God. Uh, God, uh, Josh, myself, and Brittany, Lord God, in your word, Lord. And God, I pray that you get all the glory. Yes, in God. Jesus' name, amen. 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 So, I remember last time we talked about Daniel uh, being in the fire. Yes. Which, um, 
Shadrach, Three. Meshach, and Abednego. Yeah. Yes. And that boy keeps trying to put Daniel in the fire. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, Daniel was in the lions then, boy. So <laughs> yeah, I know what you meant, Jerry. I'm just messing with you. And we talked about like the voice of the accuser, you know, against yes. Daniel, but against those that are godly and righteous. Yeah. Um, but that ultimately in the fire, um, it's hot, but we have the victory through Jesus Christ. It's kind of to sum up our last Bible study, just like you were saying earlier. Yeah. Yes, that's good, Jerry. And we talked about how that fire can be the very thing that gives us the opportunity to lead someone else into a season of belief, in a sense. Uh, so your fire is not always meant to take you out. Uh, it's meant to burn things away. Minister Marquita talked about the gold being turned up in the fire and how it, 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 you know, it purifies over and all the impurities rise to the top because the gold is the heaviest parts. Mm -hmm. And so God's trying to get something out of our lives. And it's not always uh, the Lord doing something, but it's always in God's will when he allows it. So what I mean by that is if you had like a sickness or you had something going on or something, a bad situation, we're going to talk a little bit more about how, how God steps in and aids us through this process uh, and, and the way we're going to do that tonight is by speaking about a topic called love. Um, and, and love bears all things uh, is, is what we're really going to talk about. So we talked about community having, you know, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego going into the fire last time together, them holding tight together and also holding on to that prophetic word over their life as Hebrews, you know, because they believe that the word of God was alive. And, and, and they believe that, that they literally could be led and God could lead and guide them like he did through Israel. They always shared those stories and the memories of their ancestors being led through the desert, Jerry. So it was powerful that he did that uh, for them. And also that they were young, but they still believed God and his word and what he said. But tonight we're going to go New Testament. We went, we went from Daniel chapter three. We're going to go New Testament tonight. And we're going to start off in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, and we're going to read verses 7. Now, this is the love chapter. Everybody knows it. The gifts, we just spoke about this in church as a panel, which was really exciting. We spoke about the gifts of the Spirit in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, and then we said, but now I'll show you the greatest way at the end of chapter 12 Coming into 13, it starts about, it starts talking about how if I speak in tongues of men and angels, this is a very familiar scripture. Uh, I am only a noisy gong. Uh, it says, if I have prophetic powers and I understand all mysteries and knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains but have not love, I am nothing. If I give away all I have and I deliver my body to be burned, there you go, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, but have not love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Here goes a definition for you, right? Love is patient. Love does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. Watch this. Here's where we're going to hover tonight. Love bears all things, believes all things, and hopes all things, and endures all things. Verse 8, and I'm going to stop here. We're going to talk. Love never ends. As for prophecies, they will pass away. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will pass away. So guys, first off, I want to talk about that word love. And, and, and I want to ask, what is love to you? And I want to get some interaction tonight. Jerry brought up something earlier I thought was absolutely beautiful. And I thought it was a great idea. Let's flood the chat. What is love to you? As we're talking, I want you guys to be like, well, love is this. Love is this. If you want to put an example up there of, what love looks like as an example, either to your kid, to a family member, to a friend. Maybe somebody's done something that blessed your heart and showed you that they love you. So as we talk about love, we're going to break it down. Uh, but that word love in this section is agape. Um, and, and I love this word. It's one of my favorite words, actually, in the Greek, because it has significant meaning. And I was wondering maybe if Jerry, I have it pulled up, but I was wondering maybe if you could talk a little bit about 
um, agape and, and what that means, Jerry. Okay. Oh. I was waiting to see if we had any comments. Oh, as they do that. Oh, Mr. Roy says love is action. Yeah. Okay. That's good. That's good, Albert. So awesome. by action, you mean love is not just something you say to somebody. Love is something you do for somebody. And we will get deeper in that. I, I really like the way you, you put that down, man. Well, Agape, um, 1 Corinthians 13 and 7, if you guys are there. Um, it says love bears all things. Um, I think it would be good to get a good understanding of that word um, in the Greek. I think that would be the right way to say it in the Greek. Um, and I'm in Bible uh, looking up this word um, in the Greek. And um, and it says, I have the right scripture here. Okay, hold on. Next I got you, Jerry. you. Let me let me read it off for you, Jerry. It says love, agape, love, goodwill. It says benevolence, goodwill, esteem, plur, love, feast. And then it goes on to say that properly, agape, properly, love, which can, uh, centers in moral preference. So too in secular ancient Greek focuses on preference, likewise to the verb, and then it goes on. But basically, it goes on further down here to say that this is the kind of love that God has for us. And so when we think about that, we're like, what does that mean? What kind of love does God have for us? And right now it says love bears all things. And so, so there it is, agape. Uh, the, basically, to break it down the way I've already always heard it talk to me, because I don't want to try to come up with something new, is the unconditional love of God. As a human being, we say we love someone unconditionally, even our children. That is not a true statement. Everybody has a line and has a marker. They really do. And when you cross that marker, man, all patience goes out the window. Everything blows up. It's like we played this game last night called the Exploding Kittens. I don't know if you played it. I thought it was hilarious. We play with the family. It's hilarious to play with everybody. It's a fun game. I feel like it's a clean game. Um, and, and, and it's like you pick up the wrong card and you blow up unless you have a diffuse button. Well, God always has a diffuse button with us. And he, he diffuses any anger or wrath towards us in the sense of he would rather see us flourish in him than to die. So his love never ceases. He only tries to draw us by that. Um, but, but love is a person. Uh, and the reason that I bring that up is in First John, it talks about love being a person. It says God is love. So when we read in First Corinthians, it's the same agape that is used here as it is in many scriptures. I, and I could just tell you a few just right offhand because Jerry gave me, he said, Josh, you know how when you pull up on Bible Hub, this is a great tool, by the way, BibleHub.com or Biblos, B-I-B-L-O-S dot com. You can go in here and use the concordance for free. It is a tool. You can look up Hebrew. You can look up Greek. You can look up all this stuff that we're looking up. And look, I'm going to be a little unorthodox. This is what it looks like. Look, guys, we have all of this. I don't. It's good for you to know. I like to, to give you everything that I have. It looks similar. I know it's a little blurry, but it brings up the word agape right there so you can read it. I know it's sideways. Let me flip it around for you. Agape right there. And it gives the definition. And it breaks things down. I was shopping for watches earlier. If anybody wants one, just tag me. I probably won't buy it for you. It must be. <laughs> <laughs> Let me flip this back around. So anyway, there's a few scriptures that use the same word. Jerry brought up earlier, Matthew 24, 12. Most people's love will grow cold. That's agape. Justice, uh, this is in Luke eleven forty two. 42. It says justice and the love of God. And then you have in John 1513, which is one of my favorite scriptures, it says, no greater love has any man than this, that he laid down his life for his friends. And what Jesus was telling them was, I am the kind of love that you've been looking for, and I'm going to lay my life down. So he was teaching them, but he was also prophesying about what he was going to do for his friends because he called them friends. So well, I got God a question. Is bodies. Yeah, please. Please, Jerry, so, I love it. Kick in. I want to ask Brittany this question. Um, how is the love of Jesus unconditional? 
How is it agape love? How could we say that? Because no matter what you do, Jesus will forgive you and still loves you because he has already taken on all the sin of the world. He already bears all the sin. So what you do doesn't change the love that he has for you. For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Yes. Uh, all of humanity is in the same exact boat. We've all fallen short of God's glory. None of us deserve God's grace, mm -hmm. uh, but Jesus still chose to go to the cross. Um, even though we had no conditions on our part to meet the requirement of salvation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and go ahead, Brittany. And I, I think that's where a lot of people struggle with is being able to understand and really comprehend what that means and what that looks like, you know? Uh, how so, how so, Brittany? I want you to go a little bit further in what you're saying right now, because I think you're on a good topic. You say most people, some people struggle mm -hmm. with what that looks like. So what do you mean by that? So I, I think it's natural as humans to feel guilt and shame for things. And then not only like, for example, I guess I, I can use my personal testimony. You know, when I wasn't living for God and in a place where I should be, it was a little bit more difficult to come back because I was like, oh, not only did I feel guilty and shameful about the way that I, or the things that I had done, but I was also a little, a little fearful of the judgment of the church, church coming back into the church. So okay. none of that really matters because Jesus, God doesn't, he doesn't look at those things. He's already forgiven you and he already bears the weight of everything that you could possibly do. So I think it's hard to wrap them up. I, I like that. I like that. I want to tell you something. As 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 a church goer for the past dang near 20 years, I was it 20 years, 2000, well, 15 plus years consistently. Um it, I've had my times where I have, you know, messed up or fouled up or missed services or did stuff. And it's very easy for us to get tucked away into a place where we're like, Oh man, I, you know, I won't go this. No, I'll go next Sunday. Oh, oh, yeah. man, dang, I farted again. This, oh God, I'll go next Sunday. Ah, oh, and then and when I'm, when I'm living right, I'll go back kind of right. Mm -hmm. Well, the first thing that I've learned to do, Brittany, you brought up something. You said something that was crucial right there. I don't know if you realize that you said it. You said, how is the church going to look at me? How are they going to respond to me? Right. So I make it my purpose. Nine out of 10 people, and I've been doing this for a while now as an usher, a greeter, being at the front door, the people that I haven't seen for two, three, four, five months, six months, year, year and a half, they'll show up finally after a, an amount of time. And they'll come up, <laughs> I come up and I say, bro, it's so, sis, it's so good to see you. Come here and give me a hug. I don't care where you've been. And they say, man, it's just that I've been having, I said, did you hear me? I don't care where you've been. It is so good to have you here. Now we can have lunch later because I like spending time with you and I want to hear a little bit more about your story. So maybe we, there's some healing that's needed, mm -hmm. but as for right now, I want to be like God's character and, and run to them with a ring and a robe sincerely and say, Hey, let me cover your, your, your sin. Cause love covers a multitude of sins. And so what you said, that shame's trying to sneak up on us. Uh, so as we go through things, as we're going through the fire, it's easy to say, well, like we said last week, I smell like smoke, <laughs> right? <laughs> Many different kinds of smokes, maybe. I don't know. I'm not just the burning kind. You know, maybe we smell about some other smoke or some other smoke. Um, and, and you're like, man, I'm ashamed to go to church because I feel like I haven't been living right. Mm -hmm. Well, that's not how God is viewing the relationship. He wants right. you to come back. So I, I mm -hmm. like the way you said that. But how does like God that. do that? Right. I feel like that's also part of our culture, this um, this idea of earning things. Yeah. Um, of, you know, that we have to qualify for everything or we need to work to get a sense of I did something or yes. we just feel like we can't ever, maybe unbelievers see that, maybe real, sees that they can't, um, they feel like they can't really seek God or come to God because of how bad they feel or the guilt and the mm -hmm. shame or thinking that they don't deserve it. I mean, yeah. even people struggle with that in relationships. They feel like they don't deserve love. Mm -hmm. um, when Jesus is saying, I see everything. Um, I see you in your totality. And I still love you. And I still love you. Right. And you just said it, Jerry. You you brought up the scripture earlier. You said, 
all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. So even as from the preacher, from the public, like they say in the church, and I'm being real cliche, from the pulpit to the back door, it doesn't matter. Every person in there needed God's unconditional saving grace and love. They needed that. So no matter who you see in the church or how long they've been there, like I just said, a number, that's all it is. It's a number. But the most important thing is that I'm a child of God so I can tap in to this unconditional love. And so we talked about it. I kind of gave the answer already already but who is love you know we talk about who is love and i love reading about jesus and reading about the god of the old testament and i'm putting quotations around that because i hear a lot of people say well the god of the old testament and the god of the new testament is completely different he was all about brimstone and fire and jesus is all about oh i'll save you so how does that line up well hold on let me just back up a few steps uh and tell you that I want to bring up a story. For, there's a few stories I can bring up, but Hosea and Gomer is one of them. And then uh, Jeremiah is another one. And I'm bringing up these old Bible stories just to use as a comparison. Mm -hmm. But the story of Gomer and Hosea, Hosea was a prophet of God, a righteous man living upright according to what God said to do ritualistically and by the law. And he told Hosea, God told Hosea, Go and marry Gomer, the prostitute, right? And I know I'm not, I'm, I'm not getting off topic. He said, because I want you to stay faithful to her, no matter how unfaithful she is, because this is a representation of my relationship with my people. Mm -hmm. And so the only reason that God brings you to a place of chastisement, or maybe you're in a place because you walked away, is because God's trying to get your attention. No good parent, no good father just beats their kid to beat their kid. No good father corrects their children just to correct their children. They're doing it because they want the best. They want the character. They want them close. They want to build that relationship. So my question is this, who is love? Who is love? Simply put, and we answered it earlier, we said, God, mm -hmm. what does that look like? What does that look like for God to be loved for you in the midst of the fire? You know, oh, got a question. Yeah, please. What would it be like if, if the definition of love was one of us humans? Oh my God, Jerry, are you asking me that? Ah, anybody? Oh, if I was God, look, if I was God, if, if it there'd be a bunch of people on the freeway that wouldn't be here no more. Because I'm gonna tell you right now, yeah. I need some help on the freeway, y'all. I got pray for your brother. Because I'd be driving, I'm chilling, man. I got my, I got my Lecrae, my Kenton Jones. I got. Yeah, you know, I got my worship. I'll be playing Bethel. Remember that? Like, Jesus, we love. What are you doing, brother? Oh, help me, Jesus. Help me, oh, Jesus. Yeah. Bring me back, Lord. So uh, to be honest with you, Jerry, I think you brought up a great point. If we put our own definition to love, everybody would have their own definition. Or and, like, if it was just humans, like if if we said who is love, and we said, well, it can be any human, right? Uh, if, you know, our best days you know we still have or anybody's gonna be imperfect mm -hmm. or not always do the right thing or not be acting or behaving yeah. out of the best interest for others um so i just what would it be like if if i was the definition of love it all depended on me to always mm -hmm. or any human to always be the representation it would be chaos no one would know what love is because everyone's definition would be different no one would uphold what they said love is and oh. that is why god is love because he is the ultimate standard and the one who, who yes. is perfect so watch this you just said it and god is the ultimate standard do you know why the very next verse in verse 8 on first corinthians 13 verse 8 says love never ends but right there there's another way to say is love never fails if you could raise your hand flood the chat matter of fact i'm <laughs> i want you to hashtag this because I want to create a trend that it's okay to fail. If you failed at anything in your life, mm -hmm. just put hashtag I have failed because mm -hmm. I have failed at some things. And sometimes it's good to admit that so you can come to the place where you're like, I need love that doesn't fail. You know, I've, I've been in relationships in my past that I'm like, man, this is going to last forever. And it is not lasted forever. I've been in friendships. So I'm like, man, that's going to last forever. I hope this lasts forever. There's only been one relationship and one person that has stayed 100% consistent, even when I was unfaithful. And that's God. It says he never fails. So if you have failed, 
that's okay. But here's the supernatural part of it that we can't explain. God is love and he is the definition. So love is a definition and love is a person at the same time. Yeah. We got the definition of love. It's patient. It's kind. It does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant or rude. It doesn't insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. If I've named any of those things, which I have been all of those things, by the way, and I'm going to keep going because I want to finish telling on myself, it does not yeah. rejoice in wrongdoing. I've done that, by the way, but rejoices with the truth. Now, I've rejoiced with the truth, but the truth of the matter is real love never fails. Mm -hmm. If someone tells you that they love you, like I'll go back to what Albert said earlier. If someone tells you that they love you and then they beat you down and, and beat you with their words, they beat you down with their actions. And then they say, oh, I'm so sorry. And you're like, OK, it's cool. And you're doing the Jesus thing. You know, you're, you're forgiven 390 times or however many times he told Peter to forgive. Mm -hmm. right? And the next day you come on and they beat you down and then they beat you down with their words. It's because you deserved it. And then they apologize. And this goes on and on and on. That action is not showing love. That action is speaking directly against what love is. Mm -hmm. um, there's no reason for that. So uh, I think that that's beautiful that you brought that up, Jerry. You know, that's I, think I think what you talked about the failure, I think that's really important because like even that little scripture you were going over earlier where the agape love is used in other scriptures, Matthew 24, 12, you know, just mentioned here in the app where we can look that scripture up that most people talking about the end times, most people's love will grow cold. Yes. And that's just the reality of being human. Mm -hmm. um, yes. our, sometimes, and my, I myself admit that sometimes my love has grown cold and it has not been, um, you know, where it needs to be. Mm -hmm. And I think we all as humans can fluctuate. Um, yeah. I think one more point just to prove that God is love also. He literally sent his son to live in the flesh to know us, to die for our sins. Yes. And that's, and that's, and to give you this, where the scripture is at, Brittany, where's that scripture at? It's in, it's in John three sixteen. Okay. John three sixteen. That's every, every person growing up that's ever been to church has at least heard that scripture. Mm -hmm. If they've gone more than once that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. For God so loved the world. And so the same way it is, is like, you can't really understand unconditional love because there's always a condition that gets us angry in our sin because nine, nine times out of 10, the reason that we can't love unconditionally is because of this very definition of that love does not insist on its own way. That's where we as humans normally run into problems because mm -hmm. we have our own desires. Mm -hmm. and even Jesus when he came as 100% man 100% God which that's supernatural we'll get that in just a second he came and he denied his own flesh we were talking about this earlier y'all mm -hmm. um and how can you imagine he was a man since he was tempted with everything but was without sin and so don't you think he walked around was like man you know what I think I desire maybe the desire of a wife and this is not in scripture this is my belief I'm just using this as an example he put aside every human desire that he might have had as a human, as a man growing up from a boy on up to a man before he started his ministry and chose to die for the sins of the world. And to me, that's an unconditional, uh, consistent love that goes beyond his own desire. Because he said, I always do those things that please the father. Um, so that's a great point, uh, Brittany. It, it is exactly the definition of what love would look like. Um, and so, which brings me up to my next point, and I'm just going to say it like this, and, and if somebody can, feel free to comment in the, <laughs> in the chat. If you can explain it, let me know. But my next point is, or our next point together is, you can't explain the supernatural. If you can explain it, it might just be natural. You know, if I go, if I'm sick and I go to a doctor, right, and he gives me medicine, and he said, oh, well, this makes sense because the body lines up and this medicine attacks this part and it pulls it. But for a soul to be saved by the love and grace of God and be transformed, like the Bible says, from the inside out, mm -hmm. that is a miracle in itself. That is the greatest miracle to me is salvation. How can you redeem a soul and reconcile it unto God? But this whole love bears all things. Is, 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 is powerful because now that we know who love is, how do, you, how do you walk through life when you're bearing a burden? 
I guess. And I believe that that's supernaturally done in a lot of ways. There's a lot of natural and practical things we talked about last week. But I guess like either one of y'all can pick up on this. How do you how do you bear the burden of this life just in general? I mean, not even to get specific. How do you bear the burden of this life as as a person walking on this earth? Like, what is that? What does that look like? How do you do that? Well, for me personally, I have to give it to God. Like, I need God's help to get through the burdens. Um, yeah. And that's where we go back to if God is love and love bears all, God mm. is there to help us bear our burdens, even yeah. though we are ours. Um, and then also, like, taking it back to what we talked about last week, too, about community, you know, and that's what's so, por- so important to have, you know, a church family and a community that can help you in times where, you know, you don't think that you are strong enough to bear the burden. Um, Mm -hmm. (laughs) Super cliche um, example. Um, But like, like how we were talking earlier about the gym, you know, and weightlifting. Oh my God. You know, it's, you have to, you have to do the work and lift the weight, but you have someone there where in your moments of weakness, you have to help lift it. Mm. So. Jerry, what you think, man? You, did you have something to add to that? You look, you got something, man. I see you. <laughs> well, um, I was just thinking about this old classic book. Um, what was it called? Uh, the Pilgrim's Progress is what the book see, was called. Talk to me, Jerry. I want to know about the Pilgrim's Progress. Old boy was on this journey. <laughs> and uh, he, he was just so happy, you know, when the burden got taken, lifted off of him. Mm. He was trying to go on this journey. And, yes. Um, you know, walk through all kinds of terrains, being different people and situations. Um, but that's one thing that stuck out to me, just just picturing someone carrying that burden. Mm-hmm. And, you know, what, what do people typically do when they feel like they can't, mm-hmm. um, they're too tired to go on or they're too discouraged to move? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, people, we can handle burden in different ways. You know, of course, um, in the way that we're a Christian, we, you know, we ought to be doing things that are, um, you know, healthy, uh, psychologically and emotionally and with our relationships with people, um, leaning on one another in community, um, you know, getting counseling, things like that. But also people can uh, bear the burden um, and by just giving into all kinds of um, addictions uh, and that can come in the form of many things, um, whether that be uh, drugs or alcohol, um, mm-hmm. technology, um, you name it. So Jerry, with that being said, here's my thing. And this was, and I, and I have to bring this up. I have to bring this up because this is, this is one thing I think that's so confusing Um, (laughs) because we, we have to hit on this. You brought up drugs, alcohol, you know, sex addiction, whatever it may be. So, and, and, and briefly, so you mean to tell me, because Brittany said the only way she could do it was with God. So does everything just stop right when you receive God? I got to hit on it. I have to. I have to hit this because this is the truth. It, it agrees with the truth, but rejoices with the truth. Well, does it just stop when I become a Christian, man? No, it, no. if anything, it, the, the fight, we expect to fight. Mm-hmm. Okay. We'll take on the fight that we're victorious. And we expect such a fight that, you know, Paul said in Ephesians 6, that we ought to take up the whole armor of God. Yeah. And yes. why would if there's ain't gonna be no fight. Why do we need any armor? Why do we need the sword of the spirit? Why do we need a breastplate of righteousness and the belt of truth? Because yes. we know um, that just because you become a Christian doesn't mean mm-hmm. you're not gonna struggle anymore. Yes. With addiction or any weakness. But, yes. but God's looking for us to admit that we have a weakness mm-hmm. because it says when we are weak, then he is able to help us lift the burden. Yeah. And I wanna... Mm-hmm. I want to also say like our relationship with God is so important in those moments. Um, yes. If we're not able to trust in him and talk to him, like we have a relationship mm. and be open and honest about it. Like Jerry said, you know, we have to admit our weaknesses um, and then ask him for help in those moments, mm-hmm. um, you know, until whenever, we, you know, really until forever, but, Mm-hmm. Um, it's definitely not just like an instant thing. Like, you know, you say, you know, God be my savior. God help me. And then it, poof, it's gone. It's definitely not yes. help 
in the moment. And it's the peace, God's peace yeah. that surpasses all understanding. Yes. In moments of where uh, at times the burden is going to be heavy. Life is so heavy at times. So, but, so it's, it's like it's like this, dear. So what you're saying, and I want to make sure to make it plain and practical. It's not that things will immediately be taken away, but I think what gives me the peace of mind mm -hmm. is that Jesus said, lo, I will be with you always. Once you receive him, lo, I will be with you always, even till the very end, the end of what? I think that our hope lies so much in this life, Jerry, that I feel like we get focused. So I agree with you that our hope lies so much in this life, so much in the transition and happening in this life that we forget that we are aliens of this place. Uh, Apostle uh, Precious Graham said this, mm -hmm. I'm an alien is what she said. And I thought that was beautiful. Mm -hmm. And as a, because we're not of this world, we've become a part of the kingdom of God. And so what you've done is you've redeemed your soul, but this flesh is still here in this place. Mm -hmm. So I like to tell people, I heard an old cat say this one time. He said, look, I liked a Reese cup before I got saved. And I like the Reese cup after I got saved. He said, I like the beautiful woman before I got saved. He said, and I like a beautiful woman after. He said, it ain't nothing but God that keeps me in place. So what he was saying was, I have to daily depend on God for these things, yes. which comes back to what you said, Brittany, which is beautiful. Having that community with others around you to hold you accountable. But when the community leaves, your relationship with God has to be connected yes. for that relationship to keep going. Because... There's a nowhere. The Holy Spirit comes, which is what you receive when you get salvation. Um, mm -hmm. You have that inside of you to give you nudges and hints and like, hey, check this out. This ain't good because there's three different places that we work on, not to get too deep and theological. But this is where a lot of people lose it because they're like, well, if I become a Christian and I still got to come off crack and go to rehab and do this or do that. How is God supernatural? Hold on, buddy. God can choose to do whatever he wants. You have to trust that your soul was saved for salvation for eternity. The span of life is in between my hands. It's even smaller than that. Eternity is great. It's as far as east is from the west. So your hope's lying in this life. But the first step of salvation and taking this burden off of myself and casting my cares on him, like it says in scripture, is simply receiving who Jesus Christ is as the son of God. That's called justifying you by the blood of Christ. And then you walk this thing out, even though it says that you're a new creature and all things are becoming new. Now you're going into what's called sanctification. All that means is you're simply walking through this life. You're going to have a lot of trouble, but you're growing as you, as you're going, you're growing as you're going along with the relationship with the community and, and with Christ in that, that relationship. And what you'll start seeing is uh, when you go to the gym enough, we brought up the gym earlier, that you started off needing a spotter, but then you realize, oh, I need to change my form because you can lift that weight by yourself, but you might end up hurting yourself. So that's where the community comes in. But then as you get stronger, you start realizing, dang, I need to put my weight up because this is too easy. Mm -hmm. And so you start getting these victories. And that's when you start casting those tears on Jesus. These problems start coming off because the ultimate goal, Jerry, and I know I'm talking a lot, but the ultimate goal is to remember this. One of my favorite scriptures, and I'm giving you a lot of Bible tonight, but Romans chapter 8, verse 18 says, for I reckon, I think that the sufferings of this time, this moment, are not worthy to be compared to the glory, which is the third thing, glorification, the glory that shall be revealed in me. What is the glory inside of me? The glory is the miracle of salvation and you being glorified, seated with Christ in the heavenlies. When you leave this body and you're present with the Lord, you've already walked through this life. What if you don't ever get the car? What if you don't ever get delivered from uh, whatever addiction you're dealing with? What if you're a child in Asia that's been sold into sex trafficking and you've received Jesus? Is your hope in this world or is in the world to, in, 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 the, in the, the eternal life to come? We have to preach this gospel the right way, guys. These yeah. burdens are not the end. The hope does not lie in this world. It's going to pass away. But the word of God by no means will pass away until every stroke, tittle, and dot goes to pass. And so, or comes to pass. And so I didn't mean to get off on a preaching tangent. No, that was but great. The burden part of it is where people are like, man, I shouldn't have all this burden. I shouldn't have all this. Uh, who said that? 
-hmm. Jesus didn't tell you that. You know what I'm saying, Jerry? Like, why, 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 why do we have this concept, I guess? And maybe that's a question to ask, maybe the audience. Why do we, man, I'm getting fired up. Why do we, why do we have that mindset as Christians? Why as a Christian man do I feel like, because I felt like that one time, like, man, God's just going to snatch this out. Like it wasn't no work, no commitment on my side almost to an extent. Why do we feel that way sometimes? Do you feel like it's like the way we've been taught or, I mean, what do you think? So the idea of suffering. Why, why do we feel like it should be taken away is what yeah, I'm saying. Because we get stuff, there's no struggle. We get up in the burdens. Like you're saying, that's all we can think about is. Wow, uh, Jerry. Sometimes, um, you know, just living is hard. You're trying to make money, yes. trying to live, raising your family, going to work, um, you know, going to church, serving at church. Um, just all the issues of life that, you know, someone can encounter. It can be almost overwhelming. Um to a great degree, um, but I think it also helps to um, change our perspective of that. Um, I was going to say perspective. That the Bible presents another way of thinking about mm -hmm. suffering. Um, that you know, suffering. Yes, it's hard, but the suffering not only grows your character, but also can encourage someone else um, yes. their journey. I think a lot of people that have come to Christ probably were able to connect with someone. Uh, because of maybe their past life experience um you know that's what i was thinking about that's good what you think Brittany? what what's think, your take on it like um and you've shared openly you know coming to higher calling and how how you felt like there was a way i think that you mentioned this before how there was like a weight lifted off you at one point in time mm -hmm. i don't know if it was when you got a prophetic word you mentioned it the other day and i don't know if it was on here there yeah, but you mentioned that the other day like a weight being lifted um you know, what does that feel like? Why, why do you feel like people expect, they expect more out of the church giving less? I don't know. Does that make sense what I'm saying? That they don't want to give anything to it, but they expect everything from it. From it. Like, right. does that make sense? And because even Jesus said this, he said, he said, um, uh, come to me, all ye who are heavy laden and burdened, and I will give you rest for your very souls. Mm -hmm. But then in another scripture, he said, pick up your cross and follow me. <laughs> I'm like, uh, wait, put off the burden, pick up the cross, like, uh, hold on, bro. So they want to throw the burden off, but they yeah. don't want to pick the cross up. I was mm -hmm. like, what do you mean? <laughs> so what do you, what do you think about that? Like, what do you, what's so hard to, to grasp about that? Uh, I think it's, I the think pain. it's part of just our human pain. nature. You said pain. We don't want to go through yeah. pain. Yeah. And discomfort. Dying to self. Dying mm -hmm. to self. Dying like to self, right? Because <laughs> as humans, we want what we want, right? And that's yeah. why uh, most of the actions that we take in life is to get what we want, you know? And it so is. I think it's just part of our human nature to not want to suffer. And also, I think we lived in a very performance-driven world, yes. um, you know, where everything is about what you can do and how many hours you can work or how much money you can make so you can have the best car and, you mm -hmm. know, just the way that our world is set up. and and yeah, we don't want to feel that. What God is looking for, yeah. Nobody so, wants to consequences. Mm -hmm. I would so, like to read this quote yeah. from the book on suffering um, about kind of what we're talking about. Is that okay, Josh? Oh, absolutely, Jay. Absolutely. It says, this is from the Spurgeon's Library on Suffering, um, written by a guy named John Wilson. It's kind of an old school book, but it says, the time of affliction is usually God's gracious trysting season with his people. The time of their rarest comforts and sweetest foretaste of heaven. Paul and Silas did never sing more joyfully than when they were laid in the inner prison, with their backs torn with scourges and their feet fast in the stocks. Mm. When it was, and when was it that Jacob saw the angels of God ascending and descending upon the ladder that reached between heaven and earth? But at the time when he was in a destitute case, forced to lie in the open fields, having no canopy but the heavens and no pillow but a stone. Mm. Wow. wow. So I was thinking about the perspective on suffering. That that's when we can encounter God so powerfully in these times of pain, in these times of suffering, that it's almost it's like, thank you, God, you let me go through that. Because had I not gone through that suffering, I would still be in a prideful position, mm -hmm. not thinking that I need a savior. 
Right. And mm-hmm. if I leave this world without a savior, um, then the Bible teaches, you know, there's a way that seems right to man, but that way leads to death. Yes. Um, Jerry, I think I think the hope lies like we were talking about so much in this world that we're trying to find the calmest water to to cast our boat out on, mm-hmm. right? Instead of asking God which which water sh- I say water is so funny which water should I put or cast my boat out on and try to allow God to lead my sails by the wind, which like he says in, in, in John chapter three, he says, just as the wind moves and goes back and forth, so it is with his spirit. So instead of being led by the spirit of God and really building a relationship to hear what he's saying, sometimes we try to find the path of least resistance. Yeah. Uh, and what that ends up doing is leading us down a path that has rocks below the water. And that's the best way I feel like the Holy Spirit was giving me that is the rough sea looks crazy on the left side, but that's casting you know, the boat in the right direction. You're, you're following direction from the Holy Spirit and it looks bad on the surface, but down below there's deep waters. Mm-hmm. And the, the scripture says deep calls out to deep. And so we don't want to carry the burden of the storm or go through all the burden of the storm. Even if, even, even if on the other side, we know there's something great. We want to take the flat surface, the lake that looks like not even a ripple is on it. And there's rocks below the surface. And it's shallow because one of the dams broke down the down the down the, the the way. And so we end up bottoming out, cracking the boat, and now we have to have someone come and restore the boat. And I know this is an example, but this is how the Holy Spirit was giving it to me. And so many times we try to take that calm path because we think that's the way to go instead of saying, God, which path do I take? Like acknowledging God in all our ways. And so it's it's better to say, Hey God, why? Do you have me in this place right now and lead me through it as I go through it so that you can build the kind of character in me that that glorifies your name? Because God's going to get his glory regardless. But I want to be a willing vessel in the middle of it to say, hey, God, where do you have me? I don't want to be like the scripture says where it says hope deferred or, or that, that's made to wait long periods of time deferred uh, makes the heart sick. Sometimes my heart gets sick from waiting on a specific answer to a prayer. And I have to go back before God. And I remember the scripture in Romans 5, 5, it says, and hope does not disappoint. Y'all hear that? Hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out within our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has given it to us. And so if we if we become a Christian, um, if you become a Christian, as I have become a Christian, as Brittany and Jerry has, and many of us on here, then we have to remember remember that it's the Holy Spirit that poured that lavish love into us and allowed himself to come into us, that we might have a hope that goes beyond this life. So that's how you can pray in the midst of your suffering and say, God, what is this? Help me out. I don't understand it. And being real, God, I'm depressed. I'm suicidal. This has been too long. Help lead me, guide me, give me strength. Get the glory, though, is the main thing. And so if if you're thinking about, you know, suicide, I would say die to the desire to die and choose to live in Christ. Die to the desire to die, to literally die, and choose to live for God. And, And you never know, God can change that thing around for you, whoever you may be on here. Uh, choose to die to the flesh in the sense of your thoughts in that area. That's easier said than done. Connect, you know, speak. I've been there. I know how that feels. And so, you know, bearing burdens that are heavy, uh, it hurts. Let's just be real. It hurts, y'all. It's not easy. It's really not easy. I've been in places in my life where I'm like, man, I'm I'm ready. I told the Lord, like, take me home. I told y'all last week, like, please just take me home. I'm ready to see you. I'm tired of dealing with all the mess. I'm tired of not having money. I'm tired of not having what I need for my necessities. I'm tired. Like there's been things that have come across my path in my short period of time on this earth that has made me like, God, do I really want to live right now? Like straight up. And so those burdens are easier to cast when you're in a community because you have everyone casting their burdens on the savior. Um, Jay, what do you think about what do you think about Jesus being crushed? 
And I know that this seems off topic, but it's not because um, <laughs> he it, it says in the Bible in Isaiah 53 that it pleased God to crush him. And and he took on our iniquities and, and all those burdens of, of sin on himself. And I guess my question would be, did he do that for everybody? Or was that all sin in the world? Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, it says in the Bible that when he was on the cross, that um, basically all the weight of the sin of the whole world mm-hmm. was on him. You know, I was just thinking about Jesus, how he was hanging on nails in a tree, um, which was oh, wow. a cursed position, uh, number one. And then just to think about like, bearing the weight on those nails um all the sin of the world uh, to the point where it pleased god to crush jesus seeing the sin that was on on him um but i thought about that's the ultimate um he he bore the ultimate weight um so he bore the weight that none of us can bear yeah none of us can bear the weight of sin none of us can bear the weight of what we deserve because of our sins, um, that weight would crush us to the point of death and eternal damnation. Um, But because Jesus bore that weight, that took that weight off our shoulders, Mm -hmm. that we have, our soul has eternal security um, and eternal freedom in Christ, you know, eternal lightness. We don't have to worry about that. It's like, when we see, except Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, we're saved. Um, and it, yeah, it's a journey after that. It's trouble you go through after that. But, you know, through all my troubles and burdens, I know that when I die, I'm going to be with Jesus. <clears throat> yes. When you have that hope and that thought and that assurance. Um, yeah. So I have a question. Something just came across my mind. So I was thinking about how, because Jesus bore all the world's sins, now God can see us again because we are not condemned. You know what I'm saying? Like God can, we can go to heaven to be with God because Jesus died on the cross for us. Mm-hmm. So makes me think maybe that was part of the reason he was pleased because of his relationship with us. Yeah. Mm. Uh, 100%. A matter of fact, there's a scripture in the Bible that says for the sake of a relationship, he endured the cross. Mm-hmm. That he endured the cross knowing <laughs> this is great knowing that it was going to create an opportunity for relationship with us so it's kind of like that thing we go back to and that's a beautiful point to bring up is no man buys a business and doesn't count the cost if he does he's a foolish man it's like no man goes to war it's the scripture it says no man goes to war without first counting his soldiers to see if it will be a good match can he win the battle and so yeah. Jesus looked down and said, hold on, are they worth it? He said, absolutely they are. Let me come down off the throne, become a man, grow up amongst them, be crushed completely. And, and like when he stood on the cross, he lied, lied, sabach, nah, that's crazy. I don't know why I remember that. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me uh, mm-hmm. in Matthew? He's telling God like, man, this is what it feels like to be under the full judgment and be crushed under the wrath. But then he goes back to Ephesians 2, 8, Brittany, and says, this is not of your own doing, for it is the gift of God. It was a sweet gift to usher us into a relationship, but there's only one way to the Father. You said it. Only one way to the Father, and that's through the Son, Jesus Christ. So just because he died for your sin, the opportunity is there. But like they used to say back in the day when someone used to come and try, you ain't nothing but opportunity is face, baby, make something happen. You got to come to him and say, hey, what's going on, God? I need something different. Yeah. And until you get to that point, um, until you get to that point, I thought there was a question. Until you get to that point and you're like, man, I'm done. I cannot hold this burden by myself. Mm-hmm. You're going to continue to walk for it. And this is the fun part about it. This is what we don't realize. Second Corinthians 4, 4 says this, for the God of this world, the devil, the prince of the power of the air of Persia, the God of this world has veiled or blinded the eyes of the unbeliever. But guess what the blood of Jesus did? It literally split the veil. So when God wants to split the veil in front of a person, it's him that reaches out first and causes the growth. Um, last, the last scripture I want to bring up for me, and then, then I'm going to let you guys go have something else. 
because we are getting close to our time. Uh, 1 Corinthians 10, verse 13 says this. If you think the temptation is too much to bear, it says, it says, no temptation has overtaken you that is not common to man. God is faithful and he will not let you be tempted beyond your ability. But with the temptation, he will also provide a way of escape that you may be able to endure it. But watch this. How it's like it's like having a GPS in your car, but never hitting the button, the address. It's like not putting the address in there and saying, I'm just gonna ride until this GPS comes on. Uh no, that's not how it works. The 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 GPS is your Bible. If you don't open this thing up, if you don't start talking to God, if you don't come to him and say, Man, look, I don't get this whole Jesus thing. Okay, I'm gonna be real with you. Okay, let me play the devil's advocate. I don't get this whole Jesus saying, preach your boy. Like this don't make no sense to me. I've been shooting, I've been killing, I've been slaying, I've been hoeing, I've been doing this, that, and the other, the third. I don't have a family. I didn't have nobody tell me about God. That's great. God said he'd be the father to the fatherless, a mother to the motherless. And I can tell you this much. I know thugs. I know people that have come straight off the street putting pistols and flags on the altar. And it doesn't matter where you are, prostitutes, pimps. Uh, 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 I don't care if you're a rich man dealing with adultery. I don't care who you are. You need Jesus. And the only way to walk through this life with the burdens that it will cast on you because it will throw you blows is by coming to him and saying, God, look, I can't carry this weight by myself because pride will only hold you up for so long. It says pride comes before a fall. That might not happen in this lifetime. If your eyes are veiled till the end because you let your pride get in the way, man, I hate it. That's that's separation from a holy God who loves you, mm -hmm. period. And I didn't mean to get morbid on that, but guys, what do you have any finishing thoughts or anything? We can pick back up on this uh, another time, but um, what, what what are your thoughts on that? You know, with the whole birthday, any finishing or, or last thoughts for that? You kind of hit my point on, on, on the head. I was just going to kind of speak about how the world can't satisfy you and how oh, wow. our hope has to be in God and eternity because, I mean, nothing in this world is going to satisfy you, no matter how hard you try. Mm. Uh, one thing that struck me um, when I was thinking about the burdens, um, this lost my page, but I'm coming back to it. Um, the love bears all things is a scripture you started off with. Yes. Um, I just wanted to go through the, uh, that verb to bear. Okay, close my. Okay, there it is. So to bear right there, it comes from the word. It's a verb called stego, and like love bears all things. Uh, it says to cover closely, um, so as to keep water out. Mm. Generally, to bear up under, or to cover, or conceal, uh, to ward off, bear with, endure patiently. Endure patiently. Mm. Wow. so I was just simply thinking about how faithful God has been in covering us and mm -hmm. warding off things that are coming our way that you know mm. we deserve judgment and we deserve chastisement sometimes but God mm -hmm. is just protecting us as a good shepherd that's so good sometimes as Christians too we think about oh I'm going through this and this and this and little do we sometimes we don't see all the things that God is protecting us from you know yes I just thought that Brittany it's like we only see the attack that's happening. We don't see the attacks that we avoided by staying in the, the obedience and the grace of God's wings. We, we only see the attacks. But like he said, nothing's going to come at us that he didn't already know about. Yeah. So if he's allowing it, I'm saying, God, you know, is this something like Jerry, you said the other day, is this something I should be rebuking or asking what I should learn from it? Mm -hmm. Should I rebuke it? Or are you teaching me something, God? Like, what is this this whole thing with? Uh, uh, um, <laughs> you're living this best life or perfect life on this earth. Oh, Jesus said, oh, you will have trouble. But like I said earlier, lo, I will be with you till the very end. And the devil desired to sift you as wheat, but I've prayed for you and those to come. In John 17, 14 through 17, is talking about the Holy Spirit in that prayer. And so Brittany, you know, if Jesus thought enough of it to pray for the disciples that would come, which would be us here now today, and he prayed a prayer that we wouldn't be sifted this weed and also, you know, taken away uh, uh, by the tests and trials that might come our way. 
And Jerry, I think that it's worthwhile to say, God, we might need to seek God on this. And hey, I challenge you, if you've never sought God before or, or come after him or searched for him, I, I dare you to say, God, make yourself real to me. I need to know you. If you're in that place now, don't don't do it from the from the from from the way that the the uh, the Pharisees and the scribes and the teachers of the law did, like the the pious ones back in the day. Literally, come to him like God. I'm hurting. I need you. Can you help me? Your word says to cast my cares on you, and so cast your cares on him. If you forgot what that sounds like, it sounds exactly how I just said it. Your mm -hmm. word says to cast my cares on you because you care for me. So why don't we try that? Why don't we say, God, we cast our cares on you? You know, why don't we say, God, we give you this burden? It's not mine. You know, it's mine because I'm walking through it. But I trust in you. God never will leave you nor forsake you. If you're on here now and you're like, man, I've heard all this stuff, but I get around a crowd. And then when I get home, I feel so alone. I feel like I'm the only person in the world. As a matter of fact, when I'm around 1,500 people, I feel like I'm the only one in the room. Uh, if that's you, I want to reassure you that, it, that that is a lie from the pits of hell, that you are not alone. The word says that once you receive Christ, he's with you to the end. We just spoke about that. He said, even in the Old Testament, to Moses and Joshua, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Okay? And so remind yourself that the Holy Spirit is a comforter that he's there, that he sees you right now, wherever you are, you will make it through this season. The only thing you have to do is keep your eyes fixed on Jesus. Mm -hmm. the, the storm was raging on the sea when Peter stepped out of the boat. And I'm ending with this, I promise. Peter stepped out of the boat in faith, walked on a raging sea, and the burdens of the sea and the waves around him caught his attention and it said, as soon as he took his eyes off of Jesus, he began to sink. But here's the most beautiful part about this. Peter cried out to Jesus, Lord, save me. And the scripture, the very next word says, immediately, mm -hmm. immediately, Jesus came to rescue him and pulled him up. And he, he said, oh, ye of little faith. And so what I would say to you is, be like the man who brought his son to Jesus Say, God, I believe, but help me with my unbelief. God, I'm hurting, but help me with this desire to push on. God, I'm in this place, but help me see better places. God, I feel this way, but God, help me feel another way. You know, and it's okay to feel those feelings. It's okay to feel the way you feel. But I would say God never forsakes you. He'll never leave you. Um, guys, we're at that point. We have come to eight. Uh, we didn't eat, but we have come to the number eight, meaning the time. We didn't come to eat, so we're not going to send you any, like, dry ice and food or whatnot. Uh, all my dad jokes set aside. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lead uh, for salvation. Jerry, if you can do offering, and then Brittany, you can pray us out. Um, but I want to say, guys, the way to start this journey is really simple. Uh, I just want to talk to you just like I would talk to one of my homeboys or one of my friends, or one of my family members, you've heard of Jesus. And if you haven't heard of Jesus, simply put, he is the son of God. That's simply it. And in John 3, 16, it says, if you believe that, that he is the son of God and that he died for your sins, meaning this, he came down and died because we couldn't do what the law required us to do. The law being the Bible or the Torah at that time. They had a lot of laws and we've broken those laws. We've done that in some ways, shape, form, or fashion. It says we cannot be righteous. But Jesus said, I want you to be with me so bad that I will make a way for you to be with me. And that way was his son coming down and dying on your behalf. He shed his blood for you. He was beaten. He was bruised. He was whipped. He was buried. And he rose three days later after being crucified. And because of that, when you call on the name of Jesus, the Bible says those that call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved said, how can you hear without a preacher, right? And how can one preach unless he be called, right? So I said, you believe in your heart and you confess with your mouth. I'm telling you now that Jesus Christ is real. He's real to me. He's real to Jerry, Brittany, and a lot of others on here. If that's you and you want to say this quick prayer with me, and that resonated with your heart, just say this simple prayer. Say, Jesus, thank you for dying for me. I'm sorry. I believe in you now. 
And I want you to come and be with me as you said you would always be in Jesus' mighty name. It is that simple. Now, the second thing I want you to do is get connected to a body. We talked about community last week. Uh, you're more than welcome to stop by. We'll be at, at, at church, which the address will be up on our page. Uh, we're on our page now. So if you want to look up the address on our page, 1030 every Sunday and here on live every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Uh, guys, we'd love to see you. Hug your neck. If you just gave your life to Christ, no matter if you come on later, hashtag, hashtag us or DM us. Direct message us because some people don't know what DM is. I found that out the other day. Direct message us. <laughs> Uh, hashtag I'm saved. We'd love to hear from you. Thank you so much. Guys, I want to uh, encourage you guys to uh, worship through giving. Uh, Brittany's going to put up the link um, for the QR code if you would like to scan that. Um, the Bible says bring all the tithe into the storehouse. So um, God is the one who's given us anything and everything. Um, so let your, let your tithe, your 10% of your income be your act of worship to God to say thank you uh, for how you know He has bared with us mm -hmm. and bore things for us. Um, so we'll leave it on the screen. You can pause it, come back to it if you need to. Um, mm -hmm. But I'm allowing my wife to close us out in prayer for the Absolutely. evening. Lord, thank you for Josh and Jerry um, and just this platform to be able to share your word to others who may not know you. Thank you to those who always tune in and always listen, God, and are faithful um, in seeking your kingdom. God, I pray that you bless them and be with them um, this week and as we go into a new year. God, I just pray for the church um, and I pray for my friends and family and anyone who can hear my voice yes. now or later. God, I just pray that you be with them. Let them feel your love, God. And um, I pray that um, you be with us through this next season of our life and that we have the desire to seek your kingdom. Lord, we love you and we praise you in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Guys, thank you so much. Till next time, we love y'all. Albert, we love you, man. Thank you so much for your faithfulness. Yeah. We'll see you soon again. God bless you guys. Keep us in prayer. Goodbye. Bye, Jerry. Bye, Bye Brittany. Maybe. <laughs>